If you haven't seen our latest short film, Junior, yet, you should go check that out before watching this video, because today I'm going to dive into how we made Junior, both the character and the video. So in a dramatic turn of events, it turns out that we did not, in fact, model and hand animate Junior, the character. I know, shocker. But you know, we told you all in the in the, in the title even of the video. We told we told you the whole thing. Junior was animated and made with Mixamo, which is a great website. So how do you use these awesome free-to-use assets, these characters, and these wonderful animations? All you need is access to and a basic knowledge of After Effects, Blender, Video Copilot's Element 3D, and Mixamo. This is one of those effects that's like both really complicated and really simple. And so I'm going to kind of dive into it with you guys. A lot of the work is done for me already. And so you're going to see that. And that's kind of the beauty of this. So first off, you're going to log into Mixamo. And then you've got tons of characters to choose from, free models that they're giving you. And they're already rigged to all of these different animations that Mixamo has recorded for you. So really all it is is going through, picking the character that you want, and picking the animations that you need this character to be doing. In this case, we're looking for a lot of very specific movements, particularly ones that are going to match what we have our actor, Gunner, voice him. For the character of Junior. The actions kind of have to match what he's what he's saying. No, I don't. Okay, yes, yeah, so his mouth isn't moving, but we're we're moving past that. We're moving past that. Once you've got the character and the animation that you're looking for, go up to the top right-hand corner and click download. In the download settings, change the format to Kalata or Kalata or Kal I don't know how you say it, but it's 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 that one. So long as your frames per second is accurate and everything looks good to you, go ahead and click download. This is going to download the character attached to the animation into a zip folder. So extract that and save it to wherever you want. Now that you've got your character downloaded, first you have to convert it into an OBJ because I'm going to be using Video Copilot's Element 3D, like I already mentioned, which as far as I know, only takes OBJ. So this makes it pretty simple. So this is going to be the conversion process. We're using Blender only for the conversion process, not for actually animating, rendering, or compositing. I believe there are ways to do the compositing and rendering in Blender, but that's not what I did because I have access to Element 3D and it just made it a whole lot easier to do it all within After Effects. So in Blender, we're going to delete the cube and then go over to import and look for the Kaleida. Kaleida. Blah. Import the .dae file, then go down to the timeline at the bottom of the screen and you're going to change the end keyframe to whatever your end keyframe is. Then you're going to go over to export. We're then going to go click file, export, and export it as a wave front or an OBJ. Select where you want to save the product to and make sure you check animation over in the corner here. Name it whatever you want and click export OBJ. Now this is going to export each frame of animation as its own OBJ file, so keep that in mind. Make sure that you've, you know exactly where you're saving it and that you've labeled it very, very precisely so that you can find it. Because you'll see, once you start doing many, many animations, you're going to get tons and tons of different files per frame per animation. And typically you're only going to use one animation per shot. Once Blender has done its thing, you can hop into After Effects, open up a new comp, put Element 3D in there, and open that up. In order to purchase Element 3D, you can go over to videocopilot.net and there will be all kinds of information about how you can do that there. For our shots as well, we took a lot of reference photos. We used an Expo marker as our junior model just to figure out, you know, shading and lighting and whatnot. And then we also had this ring light that we used for portals just to kind of simulate how the light revolved when the portal would be open. The portals are a super basic effect that I could show you in another tutorial. Once you're to Element 3D, go up to the top left hand corner, select File, Import 3D Sequence. If you don't see the model, select Normalize Size and switch the alignment to Bottom. Click OK to go back to your After Effects comp. Use the World Transform tools to change the perspective of your model. Now comes the fun part, the compositing. Compositing is basically matching your 3D elements or your visual effects elements in with the actual footage. So you want to make sure that the lighting and the shadows and the shading, everything, it all matches. It has to match the scene around it or it's not going to look that great. So first the shadows. Go into the scene setup, click Create, Add a Plane, Scale it up, and then you're going to add this preset here, Matte Shadow. This means that this plane layer is going to be completely invisible except for shadows cast onto it. Be sure to go down to your render settings and turn on shadows and ambient occlusion. Next, go click layer and new light. I used a point light. You could also use a spotlight, which I did use for a specific light coming straight from the portal. But for these background lights, I just clicked a point light. And you can immediately see how the lighting is affecting the character. So move it to where you think it looks good or uh, similar to the scene and matches your reference images and leave it there. Then create a new one because we have two lights in the scene. We've got a blue light backlighting our monster and we've got a, this, this orange light here up front. So we're going to light him from both directions to try to blend him into the scene. Now, when you hit play, your creature should move about the scene and you've blended him as best as you can using the lights and the shadows. And you can further tweak this by playing with the render settings within Element 3D. I also added a hue saturation effect to decrease the brightness of the blue colors in the monster because that color was kind of throwing off the overall look. I'll try again! Oh, no. 
most difficult part of the shots is going to be matching the character with the world around him, so spend a lot of time on the compositing. Thanks to Mixamo, all of the hard work has been done for us. The animating, the rigging, the modeling. So this is a great tool to use for quick and easy animation and just for practicing your skills at compositing without first needing to learn animation. So that's going to do it for this tutorial on how we used Mixamo to bring Junior to life. Obviously some more went into it depending on different shots, we had different sources of lighting and we had different animations and all, and all that good stuff, but this same basic principle was used on every one of these shots with Junior in them. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like more videos like this, tutorials or just explaining how we did things, leave a like and subscribe below. Thanks!